Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go Fiber. This is part eight. In this video, I want to show you a little bit uh, more about handling requests. I'm not talking here about middleware. We've covered middleware. We're going to see middleware later when we're going to try and close out with how to generate tokens and process them and see the benefits of that. That's not what I'm talking about here today. I'm talking about specifically you get a request and your request handler, based on the type of requests you got, you want to pull out some information from that request. And thankfully, GoFiber makes this very easy by giving you some nice convenient methods, which we have already seen some of them, but I want to sort of complete it a little bit, or at least give you a little bit more context, the typical type of things you would need to do if you were building a RESTful endpoint. So for that, we're going to build out a CRUD API around items. So let's jump in. So here I am at my command line, and so I'll copy exercise seven to exercise eight. I only need a example one directory, so I'm gonna delete anything that we don't need, and then we'll get started. So I have my task going, and like I said, I'm gonna remove anything we don't need. Since we're now gonna be using middleware in this example, I'll remove that too. And so let's start with our very first endpoint. So this is gonna to be to get all items. So let's go over to our handlers. Okay, so instead of just logging some mess messages, let's create a struct to represent a, an item, and then we'll create a variable in handlers package to keep track of all of our items that are added or that we have in our database essentially. The only thing we're doing here is keeping everything in memory instead of trying to worry about a database or writing out to persistent storage. So we've written some really simple code. We have a description of an item um, as a structure and we have a map. So what we're gonna do with this map is use the item ID, which is a string, as the key to store and look up the item. And so our get items is very simple. We have a slice of items and we're going to iterate over the entire list of items in our database and just append them to the list. Then we return the list. So this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Nothing interesting here. We're not using any information that was sent by the client because for this request, we don't need to. Let's say we had to ensure that the items we return were tied to a user or they were authenticated, then we'll have to, of course, check that. But we're not doing that. So let's test it out real quick. As we can see for our get request here, we can see it's a get at that endpoint slash um, items and I return null because our item list is empty. Now what we can do instead is return a empty slice and we can do that by doing this which would initialize an empty slice for us. So even if there's nothing in our database, well, we return an empty slice, which instead of saying null, would actually give us this sort of result. Okay, so that's great and very straightforward. So the next example is to, going to be to create items. But before we do that, I want to take this time to thank our Patreon subscriber. So Mikhail, and I'm not going to try and pronounce the last name, but here's his name. Mikhail, thank you so much uh, for becoming my first Patreon subscriber. So if you are like Mikhail and you're able to contribute, it doesn't matter how much or how frequent, please do. It would greatly appreciate it. If you're watching this video and you're enjoying it or you watch my content frequently you enjoy it, please make sure that you're, you're subscribed if you haven't subscribed already. And if you are subscribed, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. And do take a minute to thumbs up the video and leave some comments. I appreciate that too. Let's get back to the code and add an endpoint for creating items. And this too is something you've seen before, so let's speed through it. And so using the general convention where you get on slash items to get all the items, you do a post items to create a new item. So let's add that endpoint and we'll call this create items. Okay. So our create item um, handler, again, it's very straightforward. We create a variable that is of type item, 
And here is the first method that we're going to see in terms of helping us to get information for the request. So we have see that body parser. And what does this do? Well, if we hover over it, it says body parser binds the request body. So the data in the request, the body of the request to a struct. And that's exactly what we're doing. And it supports decoding the following content based on content type header. Application JSON, application XML, application WW form on URL encoded, multi-form data, all this other good stuff. At least you can see it makes it super easy for us to read the information that's posted by the client. And so we try to bind to it using this. And because our item has fields exposed, and essentially with the tag data that says, okay, if you see in the JSON body, something that has ID, then bind it to this and da 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 da, and so on, the rest of it. So generally, I would not use the same object for parsing the request as I would use for storing the data. So you could imagine that this represents our entity that we're gonna put in the database. And so what I would normally do is create another struct. And then, of course, this would not have ID because I don't expect to parse an ID. And since this is going to be in the database, I generally don't have um, these information attached, these tags attached to it. It will be tags appropriate for the database I'm using. But again, we'll ignore that for now. And then instead, I will then use this to say, this is what we're gonna use to parse the content of that structure. And the thing that we wanna store, so there we go. And the item I actually want to store is going to be this bit. And now I have separated this, the request object shape from the thing that I'm storing. And also I'll do the same, I usually would do the same thing for a response because you may not want to return some of the information that you are storing in the database. But again, wanting to keep it simple, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so now I can store my item into the database and I use the item ID as the key, and then I simply return that item that I store. Okay, so let me see, why is this complaining? So create items, let me see, do I have an handler that's called create items? It should have an handler called create items. Yep, there we go, create items. And that compiles successfully. Let's test again, and so, if I do a get, I shouldn't have anything. It should be empty. But in terms of posting, let's say I were to do this. I'm using HTTP IE, by the way. And this just makes it very easy for me to construct things like post and so on. As you can see, it created an item. If you look at the request, you'll see a JSON document was created for the body in this post request. HTTP IE is very smart to notice that since I put um, some key and value in the request that I actually want to put them in the body. And there's a lot more to it and that it can do, but for now we'll leave it as just that. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing, which with curl, you would have to do something like this. Okay. So now let's move on to adding a get item by ID. And again, this one is pretty straightforward. The difference here is that now in our URL, we're going to pass the ID as part of the parameter. We've seen this before when we talk about request paths, right? So let's do that. And we've even done the part where we use the context to get the value of this parameter. But again, we're going through it to tie all of them together and to see anything new that we didn't cover before. So this should be a walk in the park because we've seen this before. And sure enough, our get item by ID handler is pretty simple. We simply extract the ID from the, the context, basically true via the request, and we look it up in the database and we return that. So let's test it. And of course, this is going to be empty, so we should um, create a request for us. Let's create a few. Let's do cars, book item, 
and so we have two and then if we go back and we get all of them we should see two um, so maybe let's push this up a little bit and then now we can ask for a specific one so we ask for one we get it we ask for two we get it and then if we ask for something that's not there we get this back this is not exactly what we should probably return if something is not there it means that the user has to decide well is everything empty? Is this actually a valid object or not? So maybe a little bit checking on our side when we don't have something would help clarify when we don't find something. Because that, what I really meant is that we didn't find the requested um, item. So we should say that. So if the item ID is empty or even the name, we could check any number of things. We can send the status HTTP status NAS found. So that's all there is, it's very, very simple. And so now we go from having an API that does something silly like that to something that does this. And of course, right now we don't have anything. So um, all those would return item not found. And now we should get item found and then to not found. So great. And you can see that here in the response, 404 item not found. So great. So now we know how to handle post we know how to handle a parameter with this ID. The next thing we want to do is do delete. Oh, this is pretty straightforward too, because this is just changing the method. Again, this is going to be delete. Now here you can say we just changed the method, but no, not really. In create, we also have to bind to the body, whereas for get, we didn't have to worry about the body. Here for delete, it's more similar to get. We don't really care about the body. There's nothing else that's going to be sent in the body that we need to worry about. So this is going to be delete item by ID. And so we go to our handler and what we can do is kind of cheat a little bit and speed things up by copying this, calling this delete handler, delete item, sorry. And same thing, we will need the ID that was passed. But now what we want to do, request to delete item. Item. And we want to look it up. And then what we want to do is do a delete. Now we can check and see if the item is there or not, and then do item not found. If it's not, if it's found, then we can do delete function here that, you know, is a built-in function that delete the element with the specified key from the map. If it's not there or the map is nil, it's like a no op, which means there's no harm or, or anything like that. You don't have to worry about a panic or anything silly. Okay. So that's all there is to it. And if we were able to delete something, remember, if we didn't find it, we'll return here, not found. But if we got here, that means there was something that we can delete. So we're going to just do send status and we're going to send HTTP status. OK. All right. So clean up and test. And so once again, we need to create something because we don't have anything in our database. And so let's create something else. So that's book cars. And then let's do um, let's get all of them and then we'll get a specific one. And now if we want to delete something, we can just specify it here and say, we want to delete. And now we get okay. And if we delete again, we should get item not found because we already deleted it. And then if we were to get all the items now, we should see we have item with ID two. I'm not going to do update because update is similar to post, except you're going to use the put HTTP method but the same exact way in which you have a body that you need to bind to, that's the, is the same thing. So the only the method there is actually gonna change. So I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you to do the put. So what else is there? Well, in terms of retrieval, we can actually fine tune what we retrieve by saying that oh, we have a query endpoint and, or maybe you want to search. So let's see that. So let's say that for example, I wanted to say that oh, I have a search capability on item. So I want to say search for item. So item, return items, item search, let's call it that, items 
search or search items. That's fine. That's actually sounds a little better. All right, so that's what we're dealing with. So let's go right to endpoint. Yep, that matches the search query. So which search query? Where's this query that I'm talking about? Well, if you were to go to like, let's say Google, and so let me show you that. And you just enter Google here, you get the search form, okay? But if you want to search for something, let's say Windows 11. Notice at the top, I would change the top to forward slash search question mark Q equals query plus blah, blah, blah. And then there's ampersand, there's a bunch of other things. So all of these are query parameters and each one of them is separated as a key value pair separated by ampersand. Now the very first one between the query parameter and the URL, it's or the request path is a question mark. So what we want to be able to do, so we can close this. So what we want to be able to do is get our query parameters to know which was provided after the URL. So essentially the key value pair that came after the question mark in our URL. So let's do that. So this time I'm simply going to say that we're only supporting one query parameter called Q. So it's going to be, I want to be able to say Q is equals to see that query Q. Now there are a bunch of query methods, but if we hover over this, you can see it says query returns the query string parameter in the URL defaults to empty string if the query doesn't exist. If the default value is given, it return that, blah, blah, blah. Of course, that makes sense. It's the same thing like our params method. All right, so we're only looking for one. So over here, we can essentially say that what we're looking for is anything that looks like this. Whatever URL is, slash items, question mark, and, oh, that, that, sorry. So search, question mark, and query slash item slash search question mark q equals to our query string and there are all kind of thing about you how you encode a query string if it has space in it if it, it has a certain type of characters and so on we're not going to cover that so we're going to keep it very simple so that's basically what our request look like and so if i come back here and we're just looking for Q, right? That is the key. The key here is Q, and then this is the value. Notice that there's nothing in the path here that says you have to provide a query string. So this is all gonna be documentation for your endpoint. So the thing we like to do is, let's just go there and then say return, see that JSON at items. So here's the implementation for our search endpoint. It's very simple we're going to ask for the query key, that is the string Q, and then we're going to check and see, is it empty? If it's empty, which means the query was, the endpoint was called without a query parameter, we'll just return and say bad request. And the reason why we'll do that is because we do have an endpoint to get all items anyway. So why have a second endpoint that operates the same way by returning, let's say, all, if the user doesn't say how they want it filtered? You will have two endpoints doing the same thing, and that can leave the confusion, in my opinion. So no, we'll say bad request. However, if we get a value, and it's not an empty string, what we'll do is create a slice of items that we're going to return. Now, if we don't find anything or we don't search for anything, of course, we're returning an empty slice. And so what we're going to do, iterate over every item in our database. So this is equivalent to searching our database and saying, hey, does an item contain, um, does an item name contains the query string we're looking for? Or if it's not in the name, is it in the item's description? And if it is in one of those two, either one of those, append it to our list. And so it's very straightforward. So let's just go test it. So I'm going to clear our screen. And of course, if we do get it should be empty there's nothing there and then of course if we post something and let's just post another thing we'll call it books for example 
and then let's um, now uh, do a search. So item slash search and right. And if we enter, you'll see it says not found. But why is it saying not found? This is wrong. We are trying to call a specific endpoint. We're trying to call this endpoint. We're not trying to call this endpoint with the value ID equals search. But the reason that is happening is because if we go back to main, so the problem is that our item that search endpoint is added after this. And so if you look, you can see that there's nothing saying that, oh, this should be, we should restrict this to ints or anything like that. Remember, we can do that, but we didn't. And so as a result, we have to, unless we are willing to say that, oh, this is for integers only, something like that. In which case, now when we do this, notice method not allowed. We get a different error message. Oh, right? <laughs> this is, oh, this is so different. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Oh, this is delete. So this is supposed to be a get actually. So clear. And so notice bad request. That's because now our query value is empty. Now, besides this, let me show you the previous problem. If I didn't say that oh, that had to be an int, we'll have the problem of, let's go clear. Let's do this. And we'll have this problem of ID being the one with our ID parameter um, variable being called. So instead, it will call this instead. And we definitely seeing that that's what's being called. And that's not what we want. Of course, we just saw we can handle it by using, we can fix that by putting, specifying that this value needs to be an int. Another thing we can do is just simply move this up to the top. And once we move this above this, now the order in which it's called is important. So now when we do this, now we get the correct handler being called. This tells us a couple of things. One, be aware of the order in which you add your endpoint. And two, if you know that oh, something needs to be of a certain type, best to specify it so that oh, you can you know, get the right behavior. No point getting like something that you have to chase down just because you didn't take the time to specify it. So while it's important to know the order in which your handlers and your paths are added, I think it's also equally or even more important to make sure that oh, if you have variable parameters that if you can specify their type, you should do so. And then now we don't really have to worry if this is added um, after those because we have said that oh, when you call something like search, which is a string, that doesn't get matched by the previous things, which we know should be int. All right, so now this is wrong. So how do we specify it? We put question mark, and then we say Q is equals to, let's say car. And we don't even have to include this in a double quotes right now or a single quote, but let's just do this. And the reason why this wouldn't work is because my command line wants me to escape the question mark. And so if I do this now, you can see I made the request and the value is CAR and it didn't find it because we didn't create anything with cars right now. So if we do HTTP minus V, let's just say colon zero items, and then we post something book, and then we post the one with car, and then let's just um, now do a query. And now you can see we get the items back. What if we add another item that says my other car, my other car, and then we post that, and then we do a search. We should get two items back, and we do. So that's our simple search endpoint. Now, like I said, there are many things that can go wrong. There are many things that you have to be careful about query parameters, and that includes like if there's a space and so on. And so we can say cars, car space. And that means we're looking for things that has the word car space. And um, maybe let's just do book item, something like that. And so you can see that came in as a single value. Now, if I did not enclose them like that, and I tried to pass it like this, that's incorrect, okay? 
And so you can have all kind of issues if you try to um, you know, pass the values incorrectly. So you have to escape them and so on. So just be careful. Like I said before, I'm gonna leave it as an exercise for you to do a put item, which means update an item that already exists. So, so essentially fill in the body for this function. That's your exercise. All right, if you don't know to do it, just take a look at the code, I'll post it, but I'm not gonna show it in this video. Okay, so that's it. I think uh, that's enough. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it, can't thank you enough. And finally, before I go, in terms of supporting the channel, there are a number of ways in which you can support the channel. A new addition is that I have a Tesla referral link and use the Tesla referral link if you're in the market for anything Tesla related, either EV or you know solar panel or anything from Tesla. Um, you can use my referral link and we both benefit by both of us getting some points. All right, take care, be safe, have a great day. Bye.